Hey guys, how are you doing? It's Catherine, and I am really excited today to tell you about our book creator from Tangent Templates. And this is a brand new tool that is available to you now. It is also free. You can go and get it on my Gumroad. And if you want to get it for free, just put zero as the price. If you would like to put in a small amount to buy a coffee for Isaac and me, that would be very much appreciated. And you are welcome to pay what you want. But there is no obligation to. It is a free tool. Now, I think at the present time, you do need a ChatGPT Plus subscription, which is $20 a month to use these tools. But that actually gives you access to so much more. It gives you the better ChatGPT and all the extra stuff that you get with ChatGPT Plus, as well as the ability to use this tool. So you do need that subscription. But other than that, this is a free tool. As far as we're concerned, it's a free tool. So this book creator does a ton of stuff. It does so many things. It will walk you through the whole process of brainstorming a low to medium content book. It will help you generate a content plan for that book. It will help you conduct market research, a competitive analysis, a potential buyer avatar. It can come up with keyword strategies, marketing planning, and just pretty much anything you can think of to do with creating, publishing, and marketing a low to medium content book. So I think this is a really exciting tool. In particular, we have trained it on my Deep Values Framework. Now, a lot of you went and downloaded this. It is free on my Gumroad. You can see here, here is my Deep Values package. It's free. Look at that. We've had 48 reviews, five star reviews. It is unanimously very popular. You guys have really enjoyed using the Deep Values. So thank you very much for that. And what Deep Values is, is a list of 133 different values. And there's also a book that goes with it. If you actually grab the Deep Values from my Gumroad, there's also a book which explains how to use them. So let's say, for example, you create a fitness tracker, which you can do with Tangent Templates. If we go down to the November templates, you'll see here that there is a workout journal, for example. And there's actually a lot more in the designer tool and tangent templates. You can edit this page and create other ones like it and, of course, customize it. But let's say you create a workout journal. Well, this is a great template. It's a straightforward workout journal template. But the problem is there are a lot of different workout journals on Amazon. But what you need to do is find a way to differentiate your book and make it particularly desirable to your chosen audience. So how do you do that? Well, the concept of deep values is that people don't just go to Amazon and say, well, I need a workout journal or a fitness journal. Deep down, they might be working on something else about themselves. So for example, they might want a workout journal, maybe because they've been to the doctor and they've found that they're not fit and they're concerned about their health. So, I mean, health is right there. There we go. That would be a reason to buy a workout journal because you want to improve your health. Now, there may be less obvious reasons. I mean, maybe you're trying to attract a partner. So beauty could be a reason for working out. Maybe endurance or growth. See, growth is in there as well. And maybe it gives you a sense of growth to go to the gym and work out and feel your body getting stronger. So what you really need to do if you're marketing something to someone, you need to understand the psychology behind it of why do they want to buy that particular book? Why do they want to have that particular experience? And it doesn't have to be a fitness journal. It could be any of the templates and tangent templates. I mean, there's prayer journals in there. Someone might buy a prayer journal because they want to work on themselves. Some people might get a prayer journal because they want peace. Some may be looking for prosperity. There's a garden paper here. Some people may want to garden for their health. I know my grandpa used to consider gardening kind of a workout. Some people might garden because they want to provide food for their community. Some people might garden because they want to save money. Some people might garden because they want to learn more about exotic plants. Like there are different reasons that people might want to create a gardening book. So it's like we give you the, the basic templates here, but how you choose to brand them and how you choose to market them is really what will make people buy your book 
And if you start understanding these deep values, the reasons why people buy a book and not just the obvious reasons like, oh, I need a book about what I've planted today, but to understand why they've been planting, people might say, oh, yeah, I want to buy a gardening book that's a community gardening book, how to grow fruit for your community. I may want to buy the gardening book that's about how to grow exotic plants because I want to learn about those. So by understanding deep values, you can really make a book that appeals to people and that stands out against everything else on the market. So let's talk about this tool. So it will be available on my Gumroad. I will put the link down at the bottom. So once you download it from Gumroad, you will get a link. So once you click the link, you will see it pop up in your chat GPT and it will also be added to the sidebar. So you should see book creative from tangent templates. And this tool is called a GPT or an assistant or an agent, any of those terms. It's simply a bot that we have created in chat GPT that you can access. So it's like a customized mini version of chat GPT that is specially trained on things like tangent templates, deep values in particular, it's very focused on deep values, and also on TT Turbo, which is our AI tool that allows you to bring data from ChatGPT into Tangent Templates and just publish it as a book. Now, whether or not you're using Tangent Templates, this tool is still super valuable because it allows you to just brainstorm the whole concept of a book. And so one thing before I really get started on this, I want to tell you that you can use the menu command in this. So you can just type menu at any time and it will tell you all of the things it can do. So here you go. This is a taste of what it can do. And actually it can do much, much more than this. So this is just what it is trained on, what it knows really well how to do, but it can do so much more. So what I recommend you start with is help me brainstorm a book concept. But you can also conduct market research. You can create a buyer persona report for your book. You can ask about the deep values framework and it will explain it to you. You can create a content plan for your book. You can make cover mock-ups. You can generate a keyword report and an SEO report for your book. You can suggest marketing strategies like how do I put my book out there? You can ask more about Tangent Templates. You can ask about Tangent Templates Turbo and it will tell you how to use that. And actually, this will help you generate content for Turbo as well. It understands the format. So you can just generate, say, a quiz, a list of jokes, anything to do with your book. And then you can import that straight into Tangent Templates using TT Turbo and it will lay it out on pages for you. So it's very powerful. It understands that tool. You can also ask it things like, how do you contact me? How do you join our Facebook group or just explain Amazon KDP? You can even say, I'd like to buy Catherine and Isaac a coffee, or you can ask about the tool. You can do any of those things. But actually, as I say, it does a lot more than this. This is just kind of a taster of it. And bear in mind, it's chat GPT. So you can build off any of these things and ask it for more information from its general knowledge. So this is a huge, powerful tool that really understands what you want to do, which is to create a low or medium content book. So let's get going. I'm just going to copy and paste that actually. Help me brainstorm a book concept. Okay, great. So the first thing it asks you to do is to choose a template. And this is just to give you an idea of the kind of book you want to create. And it gives you some suggestions. And what you'll see is that a lot of these suggestions, if we go to Tangent Interiors where you can see all the templates, it gives you some suggestions from these templates. But you can actually pick any of your own. You can go to education, mindfulness, November. You can even give it a template that doesn't exist. And if you're using another system, boo hiss, you can put in a template from another system if you want. You just tell it what kind of book you want to create. So I'm going to go with story paper for this one. So what it's doing now is creating a deep values report for you with some niche suggestions. So this is really doing the work suggested by the deep values framework. So what it does is it looks at story paper and it picks five deep values that it thinks are relevant to that story paper. So for example, creativity, learning, family, adventure, and mindfulness. 
are all deep values that might be connected with reasons someone might want to write stories or write in a book. And again, remember, we're creating low or medium content books where the user writes in the book. And then what it does is it suggests some sub niches. Now, <laughs> I, I see that it's putting these little break tags in there. So that's a little glitch. You can ignore stuff like that. Or if you want to, you can just say, I don't like the break tags in the table. Please reformat. And it will give you a nicer design for that table. So it can do things like that, which is great because it makes it a little bit easier to read. And of course, you can copy and paste this. You can ask it to put it in a PDF so you can print it out if, if you want to have this on your desk. So there we go. Let's take a look at this. And one thing I should say is that this does run on ChatGPT. So I've done my best to train this to be as beautiful, flawless and seamless as possible. But we know what ChatGPT does. Sometimes it decides what it wants to do. It decides to be unpredictable or creative or do strange things. If you get stuck at any time, just type continue or type help or type menu and you will be back on track. It will remember what it's working on. So, OK, let's take a look at this. We have our deep values report, our niche suggestions. So now we've got some ideas of what we could do with our book. So let's take a look at this. So we've got creativity. Could be about children's imaginations, artistic expression, storytelling games. That's interesting. Under adventure, we've got travel and exploration, space adventures. That'd be really fun. You can make a sci-fi story creating book. And I'll show you what the story paper is. This is the story paper in Tangent Templates. And again, we're just using this as our starter concept. And the story papers so that you can write your own stories. Now, you can adapt this for adults or for kids because there's no reason adults might not want to write a story writing book as well. So let's pick one. I think we're going to go with. Ooh, let's see. I think I'm going to choose space adventures. I like that one. So we just type it in. You, you can just choose anything from this. And it, it's very flexible. Whoa, OK, now it's giving us title suggestions for our book. So these look great. We've got Alien Encounters Beyond Earth. So you could write alien stories, space time adventures about time travel. Like that would be really fun to make a book for kids where they can write time travel stories. Like the great thing with this is you never have a blank slate. This will always give you ideas. You can just work your way through it, generate so many ideas from this. And for any niche, for any concept, for any template, it will help you come up with ideas. The astronaut's diary. How cool is that, that a kid could pretend to be an astronaut and have a journal they could write in as an astronaut? Wow. So I recommend making notes. I recommend sort of keeping ideas as you go through this, because you will probably come up with so much as you go through it. So let's pick one. I'm going to go with alien encounters. Cool. OK. So what we're doing is really zooming in on a book concept. It keeps giving you suggestions. So it's almost like multiple choice or choose your own adventure where it keeps giving you ideas and letting you zoom in on it further and further. OK, so this has fleshed out the concept of this book a little more. And actually, I recently updated the bot. I forgot to publish the changes, but this actually gives you a little bit more information now. So if you use this, you're going to find it also gives you things like the tagline for the book and it gives you suggestions for the cover design. So this actually does a lot more than this. But right now it gives you the title of the book. It gives you the concept. It gives you the goal of the book to ignite children's imagination about the universe, foster an interest in astronomy and teach valuable lessons about acceptance and understanding of diff different cultures. So this isn't just a book about aliens. It tells you some extra things you can put into this book if you're making a book for kids. Like how powerful is that? I, I wouldn't have even thought of that, that writing alien stories, you could put information in there about acceptance and understanding of different cultures and information about astronomy. And what's great is you can just use chat GPT to generate some content for kids that teaches them the basics of astronomy or has maybe quizzes about astronomy. So you could build that into your book. So let's let it go through. Next, we can conduct market research, including a competitive analysis and a buyer report. 
Let's do this. So it says, would you like to proceed with the market research? We're just going to say yes and let it do its magic. Now, what you will notice is that sometimes it browses for information. Sometimes it doesn't. As I say, it's using chat GPT. So it's using the best methods it can as it works. So if you're not happy with how it's done something, if you're not happy with the approach it's taken, you can change that. You can fix that and say, no, I don't want it to work this way. I want it to do something else. And that's the flexibility of this. So this has actually gone and found some books that have a similar theme. Now, what I would say is these are not medium content books or low content books. It looks like these are actual storybooks. That's fine. Actually, that is absolutely fine because it still gives you some information about what's in those books, what are popular themes. So it says, would, for the book by a report, would you like to focus on a specific demographic? such as children of a certain age group, or should we create a more general profile? Well, I'm thinking let's do kids age 11 to 15. Now, with many books, if you have a more adult concept, in this case, because it's actually creating a book aimed at kids, it's actually asked us for more information about the demographic. So check this out. It has created an avatar of a kid who might enjoy this book, and look at that. He's in his little bedroom with all his space things on the wall. How cool is that? He's called Alex. He's 13. He's a middle school student. Um, he relies on his parents. He's, of course, single, lives with his parents and has a younger brother or sister. He has a younger sibling. He's in a suburban area and it tells you a little bit about him. He's an imaginative, curious student with a passion for space and science fiction attracted to books that allow them to escape into worlds of space adventure and alien encounters. So this is the reason for buying the book. And again, if you're doing a more sort of adult theme book, like let's say a wedding planner, for example, it's going to give you a very different avatar and it's going to give you very different reasons for buying. And it tells you a whole lot more about him. So it, it gives you some characteristics of this kid, what he's into, interested in STEM fields, now, you can really think on the, like, these are very thought provoking things. Because if this kid's into STEM, that kind of tells you where maybe you could look for marketing. For example, maybe you want to team up. There's a lot of schools, like my kid goes to Coda School. There's a lot of schools that you could perhaps connect with to find kids that are into these kind of themes. And if you take the suggestions from this tool, where it said, for example, you could use this book to teach about astronomy. You can put elements in here that appeal educationally. Or if you want to put in elements about working with other cultures, that would be something that would appeal to more traditional schools, perhaps, where they want to teach those values to kids. So this is where the deep values framework underlying all of this is very, very powerful because it not only helps you conceptualize your book, create the content for your book, but also it helps you figure out a marketing strategy for that book. So you can see what Alex is struggling with. He's having a hard time balancing his schoolwork with his hobbies. Oh no. So maybe you could put something in, in the book to help with that. Maybe you could put a homework planner in there or you could uh, give him suggestions for science projects that maybe blend his hobbies with his schoolwork. So you've got like so much information in here. It tells you some details about how how his budget is. For example, he relies on allowance and gifts. So perhaps you need to market this as a birthday gift or a Christmas gift. He likes to visit libraries. Okay, so there's another lead there. Maybe you could talk to libraries, school book fairs. These are the search terms. He looks for space adventures, science fiction for kids, and so on. So there we go. There's Alex and a report about Alex. So now we can do some keyword research. So let's say, yes, would you like to proceed with keyword research? Absolutely, let's do that. So it's doing a little bit of work and there we go. Now it is finding you a good list of long tail keywords for this book. And you can say more keywords. Usually it gives you a little more. Sometimes if ChatGPT is busy, it might sort of truncate how much it's giving you. So you can just say more keywords. 
Now, if you like, you can ask for more keywords. You can ask for a more in-depth report that will give you suggestions for articles or blog posts you could write about your book or adverts. So you can ask it for so many things about your book. What we can also ask for is a content plan for the book. So let's ask for a content plan. So the content plan is really valuable. What this does is it suggests several different pages that you might want to use in your book. So these are just concepts. You can take these and turn these into pages that you can put once in your book. You could repeat throughout your book. So for example, I, I don't know, let's see, we've got learning alien culture. That would be a really fun page to put in your book where the child could write about different aspects of alien life. Like they could fill out the language of the aliens, the customs and technologies. Like it's a great sort of creative exercise. So what you can do is now choose one of these pages. So we could say Galactic Challenges. Let's learn more about this page. And what it will do is actually give you some suggestions for what that page could look like. So there we go. It's given us now some information about this particular page that you could create for your book. So it has a goal of the page to engage readers in the challenges faced during space travel, enhancing their problem solving skills. The page presents various challenges characters could face in space, and it has some field ideas that you can put in your book. So things like, what would you do? In fact, let me make this table a little more user friendly without BR tags. I didn't like those little break tags that it's put in there. So I just said reformat the table to be a little bit more user friendly without them. And it's put the information in a slightly cleaner table. So there we go. We've got the goal of the page is to engage readers with space travel challenges to enhance problem solving skills and space knowledge. And it has some prompt ideas like what would you do prompts for different scenarios with detailed scenarios of various space challenges. It has educational facts. It suggests you use educational facts related to each challenge. It could have interactive activities. It could have a reflection space. So you could ask it for some examples. You could say examples of scenarios and decision making prompts. So you can go off script with this. You can ask it for anything you want. Ask it to probe a little bit deeper into anything it's suggesting and it'll give you more prompts. So if you're making a space book for kids, this is fabulous. You can get the prompt ideas. So you could say, look, check this out. This is a great writing prompt for kids. Your spacecraft is approaching a dense asteroid field. The normal path is blocked. How would you navigate through the asteroid field? What tools on your spacecraft would you use to ensure a safe passage? So you can have a lot of fun with this. You encounter an alien species in distress. Their communication is hard to understand and it gives you a prompt of how do you deal with this situation. So this is kind of a fun sort of writing prompts that you could use for your page. And you can say, give me a mock-up illustration of the page and let's see what it does. So it's taking a few moments, but there we go. It's come up with its own suggested page. Sometimes these are usable, sometimes not so much, but it might give you ideas. So there you go. That's a fun mock-up. I don't think that's perfect for a low or medium content book. You're probably going to want it to be black and white, but it might give you some ideas. Like you might want to put a space shuttle picture on there. So you can ask it to refine whatever it's giving you. You can ask it to create this picture again in black and white. You could even ask it for a black and white picture of a space shuttle that you could use in your book. Although I would say if you want illustrations, I strongly recommend checking out my Imagine course because we talk about making black and white clip art in there and illustrations that you can put in your book that are very, very high quality using Mid Journey. So you do have options. I think Dali's great for creating things like mock-ups and generating ideas, but I do find Midjourney better for production-ready illustrations that are high quality. So I would recommend checking that out if you want to create illustrations for your book. Midjourney is probably the direction I would go. And we teach that in our Imagine course, so you might want to check that out at imagine.tangent.rocks. 
So let's move on. In fact, let's ask for some marketing strategies for this book. So we can say, uh, give me some marketing strategies for this book. So that's really fun. It's got some creative ideas. It has like a space themed contest you could do. You could collaborate with science channels. So this gives you some really creative ideas and you can ask it for to dive deeper on any of these things. So for example, I had a great one I was playing with when I was testing this and it suggested, oh, I was doing a journal. I was doing a guided journal and it suggested making a email journal course. And I was like, oh, this is cool. like a journaling course where you learn what you write each day. And it said this would be a great way to build interest in your book. And I was like, great, give me some more information on this. And it generated a whole email campaign for me. So I was like, oh, you can really dive deeper with anything that this suggests to you. And if you don't like those ideas, you can say, give me more strategies or give me more interesting strategies or give me Facebook strategies. So you have the power to interact with this and really guide it where you want to go. So let's start again. And I, I'm going to try a different example this time. So again, I recommend starting with help me brainstorm a book concept. And you can just click the button there at the beginning. So again, we're going to start by choosing a template. Now, I think I want to do something else. So actually, I'm going to say habit tracker. Let's let's say habit tracker and see what it suggests for that. So hopefully what it's going to do is give us some niche ideas. So it's picked out some deep values that it associates with habit trackers. So it thinks they're useful for health, for self-improvement, mindfulness, productivity. And you'll notice this time it's giving us 10 deep values. So it does vary. Sometimes it might give you five. Sometimes it might give you 10. If you want more, just ask for more. So there's a bunch of ideas in there. Let's have a look. Wow. There's so many ideas. In fact, you can create all of these ideas based off a habit tracker. So I like gratitude journaling. Let's do that one. So that comes under mindfulness. It says the deep value associated with gratitude is mindfulness. So now it's giving us some ideas for books that are about gratitude and use habit trackers. So we've got 365 days of thanks. That's a book right there. Daily tracking prompts and reflections. The thankful heart tracker. Journal for tracking daily moments of gratitude, fostering a thankful heart. That's great branding right there. The thankful heart. Harvesting happiness, cultivating gratitude and harvesting joy. These are great. And joyful journeys. I like that one. I'm going to pick joyful journeys. A gratitude log. So you just choose one of these titles and you don't have to type the whole title and you can either copy and paste it or you can just type a bit of it and it will figure it out for you. So here we go. Let's see. Title of the book, the concept a travel-inspired gratitude journal designed to track and celebrate joyful moments and experiences encountered on life's journey. And the goal to encourage users to find joy and gratitude in everyday experiences and special adventures. So that's awesome. Now it, it asks you if you want to go ahead with market research. So we'll just say yes, market research, please. So the first thing it's doing is a competitive analysis. And what it's going to do is look for similar books. Now, these may be real books. They may be. Sometimes it makes up books. It's what it is. But either way, it's giving you some really useful information about what is popular, where there are criticisms of products. And so these are kind of typical products. So you can look through this and it compares it to typical products on Amazon, typical products on Etsy. It gives you some features and criticisms of those things. And then what it does is it makes some recommendations for you for how your book can be different from the competition. So to have some diverse prompts, interactive features are nice. That's interesting. Spaces for photographs, for example, have a quality design, cultural insights. That's an interesting one. Add sections for cultural reflections during travels. So what this is trying to do is look for gaps. It's trying to look for things that the books that are currently available are not doing. And it's trying to look for what you can do to make your book stand out. So it suggests a bunch of things there. As I say, these may or may not be real books. Sometimes if it can, if it's in a good mood, it will browse for books. It will find good books for you and compare it to real books. 
Sometimes if it can't browse and chat GPT is very moody at the moment, if it's not feeling like browsing, it will give you some typical books. But either way, it ends up with some recommendations for you. And you can see here it's giving you a price range recommendation. So now it asks you if you want an avatar. So we'll just say yes, please. Okay, so I have capped out my usage for the day. I've been using this all day and making videos. So you can see I've actually done a lot of work in ChatGPT today. I hope this video has given you enough content to get the feel of how you use this book creator. It also is very familiar with TT Turbo. So what you can do is ask it for a list of prompts, for example, in a format for TT Turbo. So you can just say, give me these prompts for TT Turbo and it will create a spreadsheet for you, a table for you that you can go into the Tangent Designer and Tangent Templates. In fact, let me show you that. We'll go there quickly. So you can go into the Designer in Tangent Templates and you can go into TT Turbo and you can upload a file there, upload a quoted CSV file. The book creator can actually make you that file. So <laughs> there you go. You have a whole lot of content in this. As I say, if you get stuck, just type in menu and it will tell you what it can do. A quick rundown. It will help you brainstorm a concept for your book based on deep values. It will also allow you to create a content plan for your book. So come up with page ideas and come up with ideas for those specific pages, like the list of fields on those pages. It can make mock-ups of the pages. It can make a mock-up of the book cover. It can create a sample buyer avatar for you that tells you about the person that's going to buy your book, which gives you a whole bunch of marketing information you can use. It also will do a competitive analysis and compare either against real books or typical books on the market. It does so many things. It will tell you about marketing strategies if you ask it for marketing strategies. And if you want content to actually import into your book, you can absolutely go ahead and do that. Just say, create a quiz for me formatted for TT Turbo or create a, a list of prompts for me formatted for TT Turbo. So this is a hugely powerful tool. It's in beta. It's a new product. GPTs, the ability to create GPTs has literally only been out for days. So I'm learning it. You're learning it. We're all learning this. Um, there's a lot you can do with it. And I do want to talk more about that further down the line because I've been making a lot of these uh, GPTs, experimenting with them and what they can do. And I think there's a lot of potential in those as well. So I hope you have fun with this tool. Let me know any suggestions, feedback you have. If you get stuck using it, type menu, type help. There's all kinds of little Easter eggs and things that can help you with in there. And I think it's a great tool. So let me know what you think. Again, bear in mind, it's chat GPT, so it may glitch. It may do weird things. If it does, just ask it to regenerate the content, just reformat the table give you more user-friendly data. I've done my best to make it as straightforward and have a flow through the process, but it, it can break. These are bots, so it's chat GPT. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you have a lot of fun with it. Send me your feedback. Send me your thoughts. Send me your suggestions for this. I can add to it. I can add new features. There's a lot more we can do with this, and it's one of those things where this is literally never ending. I can go on adding to this forever. So I've just decided, okay, this is a good point where I can let you guys play with it. And I think it's got a lot of value. Isaac was playing with it, testing it and was like, wow, I'm getting so many ideas for books here. So I hope you have a great time with it. As I say, it's on my gum road. It's free. Um, <laughs> either put in a zero or if you want to make a small, like, contribution to our coffee fund you are very welcome to do that i hope you have a marvelous weekend thank you so much for watching bye